With the Supreme Court's decision on Roe v. Wade, we saw trigger laws go into effect in many states in the United States. Minnesota is not one of those places, but in the legislature, what would your position be on reproductive freedom in the state? Aaron? Um, those decisions should be between uh, women and their medical providers. When politicians get involved in uh, usurping those decisions, we can see the effects of those decisions. Uh, women like Amanda Zorowski in Texas are getting sepsis uh, because uh, they are denied the abortion care they need until they are in life, criti life critical uh, condition and some have even died because of it. And not only that, um, when women have uh, children, uh, that they need time to heal, they need time to um, be able to have childcare, to um, be able to go back to work and participate in our economy. And that, disproport that disport disproportionately affects them. And in schools, um, where I work, they have to use sick time to care for their child, where men don't necessarily have to use sick time. So it's, we need to make that whole process uh, more equitable. And yes, support alternatives as well. Um, provide uh, more support so women can have um, children and raise them and have, uh, be able to afford to do so. And support our um, uh, adoption, um, um, system as well. I adopted a son and I can tell you it's not a very um, great place to uh, um, be raised. So we need to make, uh, do as much as we can to make these systems better. So uh, women have other viable options besides abortion, but ultimately um, it's between them and their doctors. Thank you. Spencer? Yeah, so this is an incredibly uh, personal issue for many Minnesotans and especially in our district. Um, you know, uh, I myself uh, am pro-life. I always have been. Um, but when I look at the issue and I look at what Minnesotans just went through in this last session, um, House File 1 passed. Um, that made Minnesota have some of the most open um, abortion um, laws in, uh, in the state, in the country, if not the world, um, where abortion is now legal uh, uh, up until birth. And that is a fact. That is what was passed through the legislature. And I think all Minnesotans look at that and go, that's too far. And I think we as a duty as ourselves as a first world country, but also as, a, as, as people and a community where we need to have respect for life at its beginning and at its end. So that being said, when it comes to respecting women and, their, and, and everything around that, of course, the life of the mother, you know, it, when things like that or, or rape or incest, we need to make sure and protect that ability and for those choices. But at the same time, we need to make sure and fund, like my opponent said, and we agree on this, which I, I'm so glad to hear, we need to make sure we have funding for alternative centers, for adoption, for all the things that give um, women who are in these predicaments a chance. Um, and that was one of the hardest things um, when House File 1 was passed, because when it was passed, it also removed funding for places like New Beginnings uh, in Itasca County that helps those young mothers who are going through that. So I think all Minnesotans agree that we should be taking care of everybody. Um, and I think that we need to make sure that our morality, we make sure to respect life. And that means finding a balance somewhere in the middle. But allowing abortion up until birth is something that I think most Minnesotans would agree is wrong. Uh, and, and that is my stance as your, as your state representative. Rebuttal? Um, yeah, so about 99% of uh, abortions occur before fetal viability. When they uh, occur afterwards, after that 20 or so week period, there's usually a medical reason, almost always. So Minnesota law um, supports doctors making those decisions. Um, and we can see the effects when um, those rights are taken away. Women have even died, and there's nothing pro-life about that. Um, and frankly, because of Republican uh, decisions, we see the, those effects, and I really don't trust that they can make those decisions um, in the best interests of women who are caring uh, who are putting their lives, their health online to have these children as well. 
Spencer? I'll just say, I, the, the statistics there, it's, that's not the point I was raising when I said that. The fact being that if you're going to allow abortion up until birth, you leave that door open. And I think that we need to make sure and realize that, I mean, I have very many friends, and I'm sure many people watching this, have very loved ones in their lives who were born at seven months, eight months, six months. By opening that door saying, yeah, abortion's legal up until birth, we've changed the morality of our state. And I think it's incredibly important that we protect the rights of women uh, and, and their safety. With, that's why I said life of the mother, uh, rape and incest, those kinds of situations. But we need to find a line where you can't after that without those circumstances I just mentioned. Because then it is, it, it's too wide open. And we also need to protect these pregnancy centers that I'm talking about. Um, that's the right way to do things and it's by compromise. It's, a, it's about hearing from all Minnesotans because like I said, we shouldn't have some of the most extreme standards uh, as a first world country, we shouldn't.